Hello grade 10s, in today's video we're going to carry on with the atom and we're going to be looking at relative atomic mass and isotopes. This can be a difficult question in your paper so I hope you watch the whole video all the way to the end for all the teacher tips that I give. And I can't wait to see you in more videos so I hope you've subscribed. Let's jump right into the video. Before we go over what isotopes are and going over relative atomic mass, I just want to remind you about the atom atomic number, atomic mass number, how to calculate number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, because it's important for this video. Obviously, you will always make use of the periodic table. Very, very important. And what I want you to notice, if you haven't seen my other videos in this playlist, which I recommend you watching, but here is this key. This key is very, very important in case you forget the difference between atomic number, which is the small number, and relative atomic mass, which is the bottom number, the big number. So if I take a look at sodium, which is in group one on the periodic table, I can tell that the atomic number of the sodium atom is 11. Now, what this tells me about sodium is that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons, the sodium atom. Note how I'm not saying the sodium ion. The sodium ion would have a charge of Na+, and therefore the number of electrons would be different. It would have lost an electron. If you're confused about this, you have to go watch my previous videos, but we're not talking about the ion. We're talking about just the plain old atom. This number over here, the atomic number, 11, tells me that I have 11 protons and 11 electrons. Then this number over here, the bottom number, the bigger number, is the atomic mass number. And it is the number of protons plus neutrons added together. So 23, that's the number of protons and neutrons added together. Therefore, if I want to work out the number of neutrons, I take the big number on the periodic table minus the small number. So the number of neutrons in sodium will be 23 minus 11, which is 12 neutrons. Now, I hope you can recall that the neutrons are the neutral particles. They're found in the nucleus. You can see over here, the neutrons are found in there in the nucleus, and they contribute to the mass of the atom. So the more neutrons, the higher the relative atomic mass, the heavier the atom is, the greater the mass. It doesn't affect the charge though. Now, this is very important leading on to isotopes and leading on to relative atomic mass. I don't know if you've ever Googled a periodic table. So if you don't use this periodic table that we give you in the exams, if you Google one, you might notice something weird. And that is that the mass number for an element on a periodic table is not always given as a whole number. It's often given as a decimal. So look at this periodic table, for example. We've got lead being 207.2. But on our periodic table, if you look for lead, it's just 207. If you look at this periodic table, mercury is 200.59. But again, if you look at our periodic table, mercury is 201. So it seems like we're rounding off on our periodic table. These numbers are non-rounded off versions. Even chlorine on our periodic table over here is 35.5. It's not a Randolph number, and copper is 63.5. So that is interesting to note, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason why the numbers are like that. So they're not always whole numbers, they can have decimals. And the reason for this is because some atoms of the same element have different number of neutrons, and therefore a different atomic mass number. So the more neutrons you have, the greater your mass, the heavier the atom. And the whole numbers on the periodic table is kind of like an average of these different mass numbers. So what do I mean by atoms of the same element? Different atoms of the same element. What am I talking about? What I mean is if I had to take a sample of chlorine atoms. So say I take all the chlorine atoms in the world. Not all of them will have a atomic mass number of 35.5 just like the periodic table says. So if you look at chlorine, it says Cl 35.5 and 17. So you should know that 17 is the atomic number, the number of electrons and protons in a neutral atom, and then this bottom number, the atomic mass number is 35.5, which includes protons plus neutrons. Now, like I said, if I take all the chlorine atoms in the world, not all of them will have a atomic mass number of 35.5. Some chlorines will have a atomic mass number of 35. Some will have an atomic mass number of 36, and some will have an atomic mass number of 37. 
So these are different atoms of the same element. Same element as in they're all chlorine, but different atoms as in different individual atoms. So this atom of chlorine has an atomic mass number of 35. This atom has an atomic mass of 36. This one has 37. So maybe that one's 35, that one's 35, that one's 35, that one's 35. This one's 36, and these are 37. Something like that. So that's what I mean. And why do they have different atomic mass numbers? Because their number of neutrons is different. So some of them have more neutrons. And if they have more neutrons, it means they have a greater mass. So if you look at these three, which one has more neutrons? I hope you're saying 37, Cl37. It has more neutrons, therefore it has a greater atomic mass number. And again, what we see on the periodic table is kind of like an average of these numbers. And these different versions of the elements have a name. They're called isotopes of chlorine. Isotopes, okay? So isotopes are different versions, so they're different atoms of the same element. They have the same atomic number, but they have a different mass number. Okay, so their big number is the thing that's different. And here is that summary. So isotopes are atoms of the same element. So here we're talking about chlorine, 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 but they're different atoms of the same element, same atomic number. So they have the same small number but different mass number. They have a different big number. And the reason why is because their number of neutrons differ. Now, isotopes are pretty cool. They can be used for a whole lot of things. You get stable isotopes and also unstable isotopes. They are called radioactive isotopes. They can decay. It's pretty cool because isotopes can be used to date things like bones or wood. So basically we can tell how old it is. So it's pretty useful. Now, before we get to working up the relative atomic mass, RAM, which is the number that we see on the periodic table, kind of like the average, I first want to go over this with you. I am giving you three isotopes of chlorine. So we've got chlorine 35, chlorine 36, and chlorine 37. What this means is that in this isotope, the, rel the atomic mass, so the big number, is 35. In this one, the big number is 36, and in this one, the big number is 37. And I want you to answer the following. Write down the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons for each of these isotopes of chlorine. And what I've done for your reference is I've just pasted what we see on the periodic table over here. So in essence, this number over here that we see on the periodic table is kind of like an average of these three. And you might be saying to me, whoa, 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 ma'am. If I take the average of 35, 36, and 37, I do not get 35.5. But I will get to that when I go over relative atomic mass. It's not as simple as just calculating the average. We have to consider the percentage abundance, which means how often we find these different isotopes in the world, in our universe, basically. But for now, let's not focus on that. Let's look at this. So let's work with Cl35. So if I had to write the AEZ notation for this, I do have a video on this. I will link it in the description box below. But it would be Cl. So if I want it in this notation, okay, 35, that is my A number, my mass number, and my Z number is 17. Remember, for isotopes, the Z number is the same. So how many protons are in Cl35? 17 protons, okay? The small number is the same. That's the number of protons. The number of electrons, also 17 in a neutral atom, number of protons and electrons are equal. And then the number of neutrons. Remember, neutrons would be 35 minus 17, which is 18 neutrons. Big number minus small number. In this case, the big number is 35. Right, Cl36. Now, how would we write that in our AEZ notation? It would be Cl36 would be here. And again, the small number is 17, the atomic mass number is 36, but the atomic number is still 17. That means 17 protons, 17 electrons. Okay, the small number. Then my big number, or my big number minus small number, so 36 minus 17, that would get me the number of neutrons, and that is 19. So already, I hope you can see that for our isotopes, the number of protons and electrons are the same. Okay, however, the number of neutrons differs. And let's quickly do the last one. 
So again, it would be Cl37 and then 17. Number of protons, 17. Number of electrons, 17. Number of neutrons would be 37, in this case, 37, minus 17, which is 20. So the bigger the atomic mass number, the more neutrons. So you can try this one very quickly for yourself if you want to. You can look up uranium on your periodic table. The symbol is U. And here's the answer for that. So first they wanted it in this notation with the element there, the big number at the top, which is this number, and then the atomic number at the bottom, which is 92, according to the periodic table. Number of protons and electrons are the same. That's a small number. And number of neutrons is big minus small. Same thing with this one, but now it obviously has a different mass number. So therefore, the number of neutrons differ. Okay, cool. Now, what is up with this? As I said, this is working out the relative atomic mass which is basically what we find on the periodic table. And basically it's an average. However, like I said, it's not just a plain straightforward average. What we do is we need to consider the percentage abundance. And what I mean by that is if you can recall earlier in this video, we spoke about the different isotopes of chlorine. Some of these are more abundant than others. What that means is some of them occur more frequently than others. So if you look at this, and this was also something that I showed you earlier, you can see that over here, Cl35 has a 75.77% abundance. That means that 75%, 76% of all the chlorine atoms that you find will be Cl35. So there's more of this one. And then Cl36, uh, they don't even really give the percentage. It's a very tiny percentage. And then Cl37, 24.23%. So this middle one, tiny percentage, not much of that. That's why when we work out the relative atomic mass, it's 35.5 because most of our isotopes is chlorine 35. So how we do this is we work out the relative atomic mass by taking the percentage abundance. This is the percentage abundance and multiplying it by the mass number of that isotope. So each bracket represents its own isotope. So this would be one isotope, for example, Cl35. And then the next bracket would be the next isotope, for example, like Cl36. Obviously, we, we have three isotopes, so you would include a third bracket if there's three isotopes. So you take the percentage abundance times the mass number plus the percentage abundance times the mass number and so on, divided by 100. Let's do an example. It's the best way for you to understand. So in this case, I'm pretending to only consider the two isotopes of chlorine. It says chlorine has two common isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. In a sample of chlorine, now look what they say, 75.5% is chlorine 35 and 24.5% is chlorine 37. Calculate the relative atomic mass for chlorine. So we say relative atomic mass equals, now in this case, I've only got two isotopes mentioned. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So I need two brackets. Bracket number one for my first isotope, bracket number two for my second isotope. First bracket, we take the mass number, which is 35, and we times it by the percentage abundance, 75.5. Please don't put the percentage sign in there. The reason why we don't is because we're dividing by 100, which is when we deal with the percentage. So just 75.5 close the brackets plus my next isotope is chlorine 37 the 37 times the percentage abundance for chlorine 37 is 25.5 24.5 sorry and then we divide by a hundred and what you should get is 35.49 and then the unit is amu or atomic mass units Later on, when you work out um, atomic mass of a substance or molar mass of a substance, you'll also use the unit grams per mole, but don't worry about that. So 35.4, and if we had to round that up, it would be 35.5, which is what you see on the periodic table. Let's do another one. This is going to be a very long, long sum, but it's another easy example. Um, it says zinc has five stable isotopes. Here's a list of the isotopes and their natural abundances. So we got five isotopes to put in our formula now. So what we do 
is this would be your formula. It would be bracket. So this would be mass number times percentage for the one isotope plus mass number times percentage for the second isotope plus mass number times percentage abundance for the third and the fourth and the fifth. So you're going to have five brackets because it's five isotopes. This is not an important formula to write down first. It does not appear on your formula sheet. So you do have to remember this formula. But because it's not on your formula sheet, you don't have to write the formula first. So what I mean by that is you don't have to write this first. You can just go straight into substituting. So it would be 64 times 48.63. There's 64. There's 48.63 plus 66 times 27.9. The next one, 66 times 27.9. And then 67 times 4.1. That's the next one. And you keep going until you filled up your whole formula. You equal, you divide by 100 and you should get this answer over here. In the next video, I'll be going over tricky isotopes questions and relative atomic mass questions. Can get difficult. I was doing some very difficult ones with my grade tens today even. So I want you to check out the links in the description box below for more videos on the atom, isotopes, relative of atomic mass and chemistry in general. I hope you subscribe and I can't wait to see you in another video in the future. Bye everyone.